Hi everyone, this is Heather Lawton in from the Flourish Academy. This is episode 457 today. I thought we should do something fun together. We're gonna make Photoshop better because I have my laptop here. I got an email from Adobe and the title says, Photoshop research opportunity. We want to hear from you. Did you guys get this email? Um, I'm not sure if this was a mass email sent to everyone or if I received this because I'm an Adobe certified expert in Photoshop. Uh, I mean, I don't think I'm special. I just wonder if, did you get this email from Adobe? It's a Photoshop research opportunity because Adobe wants to hear from you. So we're gonna do this together. This is gonna be hilarious. I have no idea what questions they're gonna ask, but I like to fill these things out because we do not earn the right to sit around and complain about Photoshop if we don't do something to improve it. So I always fill these things out. And the first thing it's asking me is my age. Not sure how that's relevant. I'm 44 and a half and that's not an option. So maybe I shouldn't even pick one. Oh my goodness. Um, do you want to associate your information? Yes, that's fine. Okay, what is your skill level with Photoshop? Beginner, novice, intermediate, advanced, expert. Oh, definitely expert. It says people come to me for advice. Yes, expert, okay. In the last two months, what are all the ways you used Photoshop? Okay, did you adjust photos via crop, contrast, dodge, burn? Yes. Did you retouch photos? Yes. Composite multiple images? Yes. Batch process? Yes. I love batch processing. Automate is my favorite word. In addition to actions, I use droplets. And the difference is droplets are actions on steroids. <laughs> you take an action, you turn it into a droplet, and you can perform the same action on an entire folder of images. So let's say for instance, I have this final sharpening in Photoshop. I created a, it's a, an action, and then I turned it into a droplet. So when I finished my weddings, which is anywhere between five and 700 photos, I would grab the folder and drag it onto the droplet and just let Photoshop do its thing. It's magic. So batch processing, yes. Have I designed a mobile app? I don't even know what that means or how to do it. Um, design and develop web pages. Icons and graphics. Ah, I do develop my logo. Design other graphics, yes. Painting? Do we do painting? Anybody? No. Illustration, 3D, video, no, no, no. Okay, good. Continue. In the last two months, what is the primary way you used Photoshop? Primary way. Oh, you're only allowed to select one. I hate those. Primary way. There's only a few options. To adjust photos, like crop, contrast, adjustments applied to the entire image. Retouch photos, composite images, batch process, design, or design. Ooh, I would say my primary use of Photoshop is retouching. And the reason is this. The other option would be to adjust photos. But adjusting photos, what they're talking about are things that you do in Photoshop that are applied to the entire image. And all of those type of tasks I complete in Lightroom because it's faster. So I primarily use Photoshop for retouching or what I call the heavy lifting of pixels because this is about pixel manipulation. In other words, things I can't do in Lightroom. All right, continue. What is, <laughs> I read this before I said it out loud, it says, what is the relationship of Photoshop to your occupation? <laughs> I read that as, what is your relationship with Photoshop? <laughs> I love hate, that's what it is. Okay, that's not what they're asking me. Um, do you use Photoshop at work? Are you paid to use Photoshop? Is it a personal or hobby? Um, or for school. Uh, I use Photoshop at work. It is a major part of what I'm paid to do, yes. How satisfied are you with your overall experience of Photoshop? That's a loaded question. I love Photoshop and it does everything I need it to do, though not always fast. I'm gonna, it's, uh, the scale is one to seven. One is not satisfied at all. What is your experience with Photoshop? One is not satisfied. Seven is extremely satisfied. I'll say six. I think it could always be better. Which of the following devices do you own? It's asking for what type of phone, like iPhone, Android, iPad, Android tablet, desktop computer, do you use Mac or Windows? That's an interesting question. Leave a comment 
and let me know who uses Mac versus Windows, just out of curiosity. Do you use a laptop? Yes, all of that. Okay, got it. Which of the following devices do you use as part of your creative workflow? I only do my Photoshop work on my iMac. I have it on my laptop to teach on the road, um, but I, I mean, primarily my work is done on my iMac. Typically, what other hardware do you use for your creative projects in Photoshop? Do you use a Wacom? <gasps> yes, I do. A Surface Studio, a Wacom Cintiq. Have you seen the Wacom Cintiq? It's the monitor that you touch. It's beautiful. It's very expensive. I've only ever seen them at um, trade shows, but um, I never wanted to spend the money because they're super expensive. Okay, I use a Wacom Intuos 3 tablet medium is the size I have besides Photoshop what apps do you use most often for your digital digital creative workflow okay I got to type this in uh, Lightroom I know some of you have used capture one and what's the oh, photo mechanic you've used photo mechanic Think about your typical digital workflow that involves Photoshop. What percentage of time do you spend in these apps? Oh, interesting. So what it's asking is, how much time do you spend in Photoshop versus Lightroom? I'd love to know. You should leave that as a comment as well. Photoshop for me versus Lightroom. I'm gonna say Lightroom is probably 80% of my time and Photoshop is 20. That may be more like 90 10 okay let's make it 85 15. i spend 85 percent of my time in lightroom and 15 in photoshop in the last two months which of the following communication or collaboration tools have you used regularly slack which i'm familiar with microsoft teams workplace by facebook no Trello. I do use Trello. I use Trello to organize everything. Okay. I'm not sure what how that's relevant. Please indicate how strongly you agree or disagree <laughs> with the following statements. Listen to this. Photoshop is a fast and responsive application. No, it's not. You have to have, I have 32 gig of RAM in my iMac and I still, sometimes on filters, I still wait. Everything's new. Everything's up to date. Um, Photoshop is not a fast and responsive program. F I mean, in my opinion, Photoshop has the most powerful cutting edge features in its class. Of course it does. It's the leader. My Photoshop subscription is a good value for the money. Yeah, I suppose it is. $10 a month for Photoshop and Lightroom. What are you going to do? Photoshop is a stable application that rarely, if ever, crashes. Okay. I can't remember the last time Photoshop crashed on me, so it is stable. It's just not fast and responsive. So I'm gonna give that a six. Okay, thinking about your typical projects in Photoshop, please rate how valuable having access to the following options are to your current workflow. Oh my. All right, there's not that many. It looked like it was gonna be long. Access to Adobe fonts. Do you use Adobe fonts? I do not. Ability, I am, a, I am a font junkie. I have tons of fonts, but I just go find them on the interwebs. I don't use Adobe fonts. Ability to install Photoshop on multiple computers. That is extremely valuable to me. I, do you do that? I have to. I have to have it on my iMac and my MacBook Pro because I teach. Access to Adobe's tutorial content. I don't use it. Access to, I shouldn't say that. Every once in a while I'll look up something, but... Access to another Adobe application besides Photoshop. Yes, Lightroom. Access to Adobe's Creative Cloud to store my files. Do you store any files in the Creative Cloud? I do not, nor do I want to. Access to content such as brushes. I suppose that's nice. Access to Lightroom photo storage. Don't care. Access to Photoshop. Yeah, that's pretty important. That's what we're talking about. Please rate. <clears throat> whether having access to the following items would increase the value of your subscription. By the way, if you're with me live and you have a, an opinion on this, you need to share it because I will then share it with Adobe. Okay, please rate whether having access would increase the value. Ability to install Photoshop on more computers, yes. Access Photoshop on my tablet, such as an iPad. 
No. Access to free content such as stock images. I don't care. Access Photoshop on the web. No. Access to Photoshop on my smartphone. Um, that might be fun, but it's nothing I would use on a regular basis. Which of the following situations do you encounter as it relates to how you use Photoshop now? Do you send your Photoshop to someone who will extract assets or information? I do not. Do you send Photoshop files to a client? Nope. Do you send Photoshop file manager to supervise? Nope. Ugh, I'm the boss of me. <laughs> Receive a Photoshop file to provide comments? Every once in a while this happens to me because students send me something, but it's pretty rare. Send Photoshop to an instructor? Nope. Co-edit a file? Nope. Send Photoshop to someone who has access? I do that. I do. I send those to clients. Receive a Photoshop file from someone to extract assets? Send... No. No, 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 no. Who cares? Let's talk about the cloud. We'll use the term cloud tools as a short way of referring to cloud storage, cloud files, cloud documents, and other ways that people interact with files or content in the cloud. In other words, on the internet. Do you use any of these tools? Adobe Experience Manager, Apple iCloud. Everything I have is Apple. I don't use iCloud. I don't like it. Microsoft OneDrive, Adobe Creative Cloud Storage. Dropbox. Yes, I do use Dropbox. Google Drive. Yes, I do use Google Drive. Which of the following cloud tools have you used to store or share Photoshop files? And then it gives you what you selected in the last question. So I only see Dropbox and Google Drive. And I'm going to say Dropbox because I do share Photoshop files with clients via Dropbox because they're huge. You can't email them. How are these cloud tools in your Photoshop files your PSD files connected, meaning where is the access? Do you use this as a primary place to save? No. Do you access your PSD files on different devices? No. To back up? No. Cloud tools and PSD connected for another reason. Um, I have to say another reason because I have to say to share with, to share, share with clients. We would like to understand how your mobile devices play a role in your creative activities. Please tell us how strongly you agree or disagree. Do you guys use any of your mobile devices to do any of your photography work? Okay, let me be more specific, client work. Um, I know a few people use it in ways that are really smart, but I don't see like on a regular basis editing or using mobile devices to process your photos. Maybe if you're playing around with your personal work. The question is, I do most of my creative work on a laptop or desktop computer. Yes, strongly agree. That is true. How often do you currently incorporate your smartphone or tablet into your Photoshop workflow? Never, never, never. We also want to understand where you go to learn how to use Photoshop. Jess says, nope, I see that. Typically, when you need help using Photoshop, this is hilarious. This is actually a problem for me. I'm an Adobe certified expert in Photoshop. That does not mean I know everything, not at all, but I know a lot of things. So when I need help with Photoshop, I'm like, where, where do I go? Scott Kelby? I mean, I, Adobe? Because if there's something I don't understand, it's usually a pretty high level issue. So, okay, where do I learn in Photoshop? And there's a whole bunch of things here, such as YouTube, free classes, paid classes, friends, Google searches, um, posts, written guides. So for me, I go to YouTube first. I go to YouTube because I, good question. When you are learning a Photoshop concept, do you prefer to watch a video of someone executing that concept? Or would you rather read it in a blog post like step one, do this? For me, I would rather watch a video and then try to execute. But some people, some people like to read. Oh, back in the day, I had a lynda.com subscription. So, and that's one of the options. So I will mark that. That's how I learn it. Which Adobe resources have Adobe resources have you used to learn Photoshop? Nope. Photoshop's Learn Panel? Have you heard of that? 
Jessica says, yes, I love video so I can pause and work along the same, same. Photoshop YouTube channel, didn't know they had one. Helpx.adobe.com. The only time I go to that address, I have been to that address, is when Photoshop releases a new update, specifically a big dot upgrade. So when we went from 19 to 20, I did go there because I wanted to see the new features. So, um, no, I don't. What is your biggest, well, this is a good question. You should answer this in the comments. When you think about what you would like to learn in Photoshop, what is your biggest need right now? Um, I'm putting in, I don't know. They don't like that answer. I'm not sure what my biggest need in Photoshop is right now. Mm, I'll have to think about that. Please tell us how strongly you agree or disagree with the following statements. When I get stuck on a project, I know where to go for help with Photoshop. Oh, sort of. I have the time I need to pursue my creative interests in Photoshop. <laughs> Do you have extra time? Oh, you should join the um, goal setting and time management course for creatives because I own time personally. So I have all the time I need, but um, most people struggle to find time. Adobe gives me the right amount of support to learn Photoshop. Well, I suppose I do, but I don't use it. There are resources available. Yes, there are resources available. Learning to use Photoshop has been easy for me. Okay, now it is, but back in the day, it was very difficult to learn Photoshop. Um, when I started my journey with Photoshop almost 16 years ago, there, these resources didn't exist. When was YouTube even founded? I mean... They just weren't there. I had to buy Photoshop in a classroom, the book, and go through it. And the way I decided to learn Photoshop was to set a goal for myself to become an Adobe certified expert because I figured if I had to study and learn, I would. So I kind of had to force myself to do it, but it was not easy to do. Has, been, has learning Photoshop been easy for you? Uh, for most people, understand what factors drive your use of Photoshop. Typically, what motivates you to start or return to a project in Photoshop? Good question. Um, for me, it's if, if it's something I can't do in Lightroom, I go to Photoshop. Um, but do I want to express myself in a creative manner? Hmm, not entirely. Uh, I want to try a new technique. I want to learn a technique. I need to meet a deadline. None of these really apply. I don't like them. Please tell us how strongly you agree or disagree with the following. Cre <laughs> creativity is core to my identity. If I am being completely honest with you guys, for me, even as a photographer, and I consider myself in the creative field, no, it is not my core identity. My core identity related to this would be process and procedure systems. Uh, I'm an engineer by trade, not, not a creative. I'm a creative now, but... So um, I'm going to strongly disagree with that. Creativity is not my core identity. Imagining what you want out of Photoshop in the future. Please share your thoughts on each of the following. So the choices are, I want this now, I'm interested, I'm not interested, or I'd be disappointed if Adobe spent time on this. More bug fixes and per performance improvements. I want this now. I, I don't want the beach ball of death spinning all the time. Creative assistance. Photoshop offers artificial intelligence based tools and workflow shortcuts. That might be interesting. Directly connect my workflow between my smartphone. Nope. Work with PSD files online. Not interested. Collaborate with others in real time. Maybe. New or update features to speed up workflow. Yes. Work on my iPad. No. Work on my smartphone. No. New easy to install plugins, which would increase the capabilities. Maybe, I guess it depends on the plugin. Integrated learning and guidance. Um, I think that might help some people. I'm not interested, but it might benefit others. What is my number one priority? Okay, so it took my answers from the previous and it's asking me what my number one priority is. And my number one priority is more bug fixes and performance improvements. Oh my gosh, is Adobe paying me for this? lot of questions no wonder they wonder why nobody fills out these surveys holy moly I mean th look at this question I mean look at the choice oh you see my ring light and the reflection that's kind of fun um, looking at that ring light do you notice I have 
two CTO gels on the side and then I have just the opaque ones on the top and the bottom. Um, that's because I've, I've experimented with the color on this and if I do it all with the opaque, the color is a little too blue for me, but if I do it all with the orange, it's too yellow. So I split the difference. Oh, easily distracted. For the next few questions, think about a typical Photoshop project. What do you typically make? Okay, this is easy. There's a whole bunch of things here that we do not do, but basically we do photo editing, photo compositing, and I do some design work with um, text, you know, like graphics and banners that I create. So that's just a few, that was easy, easier than I thought. Who do you share your Photoshop work with? No, I mean, not my work, but the final product obviously goes to clients and students. So I'm going to put that. Where do you find source content such as photographs or graphics for your Photoshop projects? Unsplash, Creative Market, Adobe Stock, Canva, Google Searches, or Shutterstock? I actually use Creative Market for this and occasionally a Google search. Um, but Canva is a good option as well. I know a lot of you use it. We would love to see an example of your typical workflow in Photoshop. Would you be willing to share a PSD file? Oh, yeah, but not now. Can I do it later? I'm happy to do that, but not now. Oh, they give you a Dropbox. Okay, hang on. Let me copy this Dropbox link because I will do this later. Um, but not now. The name of my file is... <laughs> um, I like to name these funny things. Heather is awesome. That is the name of my file. I'll do that later. To the best of your recollection, when was the last time you updated Photoshop? Oh my gosh, every time I keep mine updated, you have to. Next two questions are optional. Are you up for a few more questions? Oh my gosh, yes, but hurry up. Creative interactive experiences are a large part of my work, minor, hobby, creative interactive experiences. No, I don't do that. AR is defined here, augmented reality is defined here as an interactive experience in a real world environment in which computer generated images are imposed on a user's view of the real world. Example is Pokemon Go. I don't know what that is. Are you, do you use any of these AR? I don't even know what that is. Do you guys know what that is? I don't. Maybe more for designers. We would like you to think of all of your creative creative activities. Have any of these things for any purpose, have you done any of these things? Digital, digital photo activities such as editing images, yes. App or interface design, website design, digital page layout, video, no, 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 no. In the past three months, why did you do these activities? Um, I am hired and paid specifically to do these things. I am, photo editing is what I do. If you do not wish to provide this information, prefer not to, oh, it wants to know female, male, non-binary, third gender, other, or prefer not to say. I'm female, comfortable with that. What is your employment status? Self-employed. Which of the following most closely describes what you do as a profession? Professional photographer is there, done. Are you interested in being part of future research? Yes. Oh, I need to put in my email address. Um, I love this stuff. It takes time, but I think, I think that it's valuable. I think, honestly, in my position, I believe this is a professional responsibility to do things like this um, because I represent the people and we can't complain unless we say something. Um, it says, any other, is there anything else you'd like to share with us about your experience with Photoshop? Please fix bugs and slow performance. Please, you are killing us. Thank you. I think we're almost done. Which of the following Photoshop opportunities are you interested in? Whoa, listen to this. 
These interviews typically last 45 to 60 minutes and they are paid approximately $100 plus. <laughs> All right, what am I interested in? I can do online surveys. I can do a, a Skype or Zoom. Yes, I can. I'd love to share my opinion. Beta testing? Oh my gosh, you, you better believe it. I would love that. Would you like to participate in app pre-release programs and provide, oh my gosh, you guys, if they pick me for this, I would die. That would be so awesome to get the pre-release so I could tell you about it. Yes, I could attend in-person interviews at one of the following, uh, I don't live in any of these areas, San Francisco, San Jose, Arden Hills, Minnesota. I mean, that's a mecca for technology for sure. New York, Seattle. No, I'm not there. I have to put in my location of Pittsburgh, PA. Oh my gosh, you're finished. Thank you. Please enter your name, first name, um, and oh, they are giving away. They're raffling off. Two winners will get a GoPro Hero 7. That's a pretty nice prize. A Sony A5100 mirrorless camera with a 16 to 50 lens. If I won that, that would be amazing. A DJI Spark drone, wouldn't know how to use it. $550 Amazon gift card. If I win this, I'll be so excited. Okay, I'm gonna fill that out. <laughs> Thanks for joining me as we went through this Photoshop survey together. I take the time to do this because I want to help and I want to improve what we need and use on an everyday basis. I'll see you in the next video.